Hey folks, all right. Well, this time I want to talk about random number generators or more accurately, pseudo random number generators. So in our programs, there are often cases where we want things to be somewhat unpredictable. You know, if we're playing some kind of a game against the computer, we don't want it to be 100% predictable because then we'd know exactly what it was going to do next and we could choose an appropriate move to beat it every time we wanted to. So we want there to be some kind of unpredictability, some kind of randomness to the behavior that the program takes. And to do that, the most common approach is behind the scenes, we get the program to pick a random number and then based on that number, take different actions. So, you know, if you've got an AI moving around, I'll Pick a, uh, pick a random number between 0, 1, and 2. If it's 0, I'll turn left. If it's 1, I'll go straight ahead. And if it's 2, I'll turn right. Or, you know, if it encounters somebody, then, you know, I'll roll a random number. And if it's less than 10, then I'll run away. And if it's greater than 50, then I'll attack. And if it's between, you know, 10 and 50, I'll negotiate. Or some such thing where we've got this range of possible random values generated and we'll use that to guide the actions that we pick next in our program. So that works fine from the perspective of our if elses. You know, we can just say once we've got the random number, we can look at it and say, well, if it's less than this, do this. If it's bigger than that, do this. If it's equal to this, do something else. All right. So our, our if else structure is fairly fairly natural, but we need that way of generating the random numbers in the first place. So that's what I want to talk about today. All right. Um, First off, in terms of the randomness, they aren't truly random values. The way random number generators work is that there is some sequence of values that they print out or that they, they, they create based on an algorithm and some starting values. If you know what those starting values are and you know what the algorithm is, then the sequence that's generated is completely predictable. We don't really worry about that on a practical level in most programs because as far as the user is concerned, if they don't know the starting values and, and or they don't know the algorithm, then the values that they get seem random. And as long as we can keep changing those starting values when we run the program different times, then not only does the behavior appear random within any given run of the program, we can also make it appear random and different across different runs of the program. So when I talk about things being pseudo random number generators, it's because while they appear to be random for the user, they are in fact completely predictable if you've got the information behind the scenes. So um, I, I'm going to, you know, often just refer to these as random numbers. Again, keep in the back of your head that these aren't truly random. Okay, in C++ in particular, one of the functions that we've got that will give us a random, a so-called random number is called rand, R-A-N-D, and no, no parameters. So you call rand, it'll give you back an apparently random long integer. So it'll be a, a non-negative value, so zero or up, and just some big random integer. So if I was to say something like, you know, x is assigned rand, and I call this function, then it generates some big value. Now, of course, <laughs> the biggest long is a pretty big value. So you're going to get something from zero to that. Now, you know, we could write all of our programs to say things like, okay, well, you know, if x is bigger than whatever half of that is, do this. If if x is, um, you know, less than 10% of this, do some other thing. So we, we could come up with programs that uh, that worked off of that specific value, but who wants to? Usually, we're more interested in writing our programs and thinking of the random numbers we're working with as being within a range. You know, give me a random number from 1 to 100. Give me a random number from 0 to 10. Uh, give me a random choice between 0 and 1. So most of the, the algorithms that we write, logically, we'll think of them in terms of these smaller ranges. So we want a way to go from that call to rand 
to some smaller, more workable range, the kind of the range that we're logically thinking about. So we'll come back and, uh, and deal with that. The other side is we have to come up with some initial seed for the random number generator. Um, again, this is the notion of some starting value to trigger the sequence of values we're going to run or we're going to generate as we call rand over and over and over again. Again, in most programs that are using some kind of random numbers, they're going to be calling rand a lot. Right? If you've got if you're controlling an AI, it's going to be making a lot of dis different decisions and you want them all to be a little bit unpredictable or most of them to be a little unpredictable. So uh, so you're going to be calling rand over and over and over again to get, you know, a, a random value to use for this choice, a random value to use for that choice, a random number to use for this choice. So, what we'll do in the beginning is set up our generator so that it starts this sequence of random numbers. And so we'll give some starting value to the generator and say, okay, base this sequence off of this value. Now, if we use the same value, the same seed every time through, then every time we run the program, it's going to give the same sequence. So every run of the program, the AI is going to make the same choices. Or, you know, if the computer's making guesses or picking random numbers, every time we run the program, it's going to pick the same thing. So when we're doing this, when we're seeding the, the random number generator, we want to pick uh, a different value, ideally, every time the program is run. So that not only does it appear to be random as we're running it, it appears to be different and random every time we run the program. So the function in that we'll be using to seed the random number generator, generator is called srand. And then we give it what value we want to use as the, the seed for the random number generator. Now again, if I actually write a number in here in my code, then every time the program runs, it's going to use the same seed. And so it's going to generate the same sequence. And so the while the sequence looks kind of random in any one run of the program, every time you run the program, it's going to be the same set of values. So usually what we'll do is say, well, let's pick something that's not so predictable predictable, something that changes every time we run the program. And one way to do that is to grab the internal time and the system time and say, okay, well, based on what time it is when the program gets run, use that as the basis for our seed. And so every time you run the program, it's going to be a different time. And so you're going to get a slightly different run. You're going to get a, a different seed and you're going to get a different random sequence. So this is just a quick example of setting up our program so that we can use srand and rand. So I'm going to include stdlib because that's got srand and rand in it. I'm going to include ctime because that's got this time function in it. And early on in the main routine, I'm going to seed my random number generator. So I'm going to call srand and I'm going to pass it time and null is a print. The null is basically just a glorified zero that's saying use the current time. So initialize my random number generator. From this point on, I can call rand as often as I like. Right? So now the random number generator has been set up correctly. It'll work for the rest of the program. I only have to do this once. All right, so back to our rand and our ranges here. Now, we want to get a random number in a more sensible range, not something from zero to whatever that giant maximum number for a long was. So let's say I want to get a number from zero to three, or from zero to 10, or from zero to 50. And so again, suppose I, I decide I'm going to control my AI, I'm going to generate a random number from zero to three. If it's zero, I'll go north. If it's one, I'll go west. If it's two, I'll go south. And if it's three, I'll go east. All right, so you, so you your pseudocode here is saying generate the random value and then have your bunch of ifs and else ifs and else, uh, final else to go through and say, okay, well, look at what the random result was and pick a direction. Right? So fairly sensible idea. And it's easy to accomplish using the modulo operator, that percent operator. If I want to get a random value from zero to n, then I take that big rand result and just take the remainder after dividing by n plus 1. All right, so if I, if I get this giant random number and divide by 4, 
then the remainder will be either 0, 1, 2, or 3. So that's where our modulo operator comes in. If you want a value from 0 to n, then you call rand and take the remainder after dividing by n plus 1. So rand mod 5 gives a random value from 0 to 4. Rand mod 101 gives a random value from 0 to 100. Right? And so this way, we can get random values in any range we like that goes from 0 to something. Now, if later on we decide we want a random number that goes from, say, m to n, then we'll figure out a random value from 0 to some x and then shift it up so that it fits in that m to n. But we'll look at that in just a second. So, quick example. Let's go through flipping a coin. Right, we'll get the user to guess the result of a coin flip. So inside, I'm going to pick what 0 and 1 are going to represent. Maybe I'm going to use 0 for tails and 1 for heads. So here, I'll go through and ask the user, you know, pick H for heads or T for tails, read in what they, what they pick, and then I'm going to use RAND to simulate a coin flip. So I'm going to take, I've got two choices here, heads or tails, and 0 or 1. So I'm going to use RAND mod 2, and that's going to give me back either a 0 or a 1. Um, I'm assuming here that we've uh, used our srand previously to, to seed our random number generator. And then we'll go through and we'll see, right, coin flip's either a 0 or a 1. So if they picked heads and coin flip is 1, then they're right. So I'll tell them correct, you know, it's heads. If they picked t for tails and coin flip has a 0 in it, then they were right, it's tails. If it's anything else, they were wrong. Either they picked heads and it was tails, or they picked tails and it was heads, or they entered something other than H or T. All right, so again, we can go through this idea of generating a random number and using it as the basis for how our program behaves. Or similarly, if I wanted to get a little fancier and simulate uh, picking a random card, out of a, you know, a deck of 52 cards. So we've got uh, our four suits, hearts and spades and diamonds and clubs, and we've got these 13 possible ranks of cards, you know, an ace, a two, a three, etc., etc., a 10, a jack, a queen, a king. So what I'm gonna do is, in my program, I'm gonna figure out, well, what numbers do I want to correspond to what values? So I'm just gonna decide, and again, this is just something I'm picking, I'm gonna pick Zero represents hearts, one is spades, two is diamonds, three is clubs, and then I'm gonna pick a second value. So I'm gonna have two integers here, one for which suit and one for which rank. And this second variable, I'm gonna say, okay, well, I'll use a one to represent an ace, a two for a two, a three for a three, etc. a 10 for a 10. An 11 will represent a jack, a 12 will represent a queen, a 13 will represent a king. And so to generate a random card, I'll have my variable for which suit it's going to be, and I use rand mod 4, and again, that's going to give me one of those four values. And then to pick the rank, I'll pick rand mod 13, which is going to give me something from 0 to 12, and I'm just going to add 1 to that to shift it up to the range 1 to 13. So 1 plus rand mod 13. All right, so now I've got something that can, you know, pick a random card from the deck. So we can go through and start generating sort of pseudo-random behavior for our programs. Now, this is an example where I didn't want you know, whatever random number I'm winding up with, I didn't want it to be in the range 0 to something. I wanted it, in this case, to be in the range 1 to 13. So what I did was got that there were 13 possible values so my rand mod 13 gave me a value in the range 0 to 12, and then I just shifted up by a position by adding the, the kind of base. The 1 was the smallest value that I wanted, so I used 1 as the, the kind of bottom of my range, right? and that's where the 1 is coming from in this addition. We can make that more general. So here, I'm going to come up with a random function where you give it two integers, m and n, and assuming here that m is less than or equal to n, 
will get random to return a random integer in that range. So it could be, you know, m, m plus 1, m plus 2, m plus 3, etc., etc., up to n, including n. So there are a total of n minus m and then add one possible values or one plus n minus m possible values in that range. So if you think about it, in uh, if I've got the range two to four, then the three there are three possible values, two, three, and four, right? So you've got, just take the, the higher minus the lower and then add one, and you've got the number of possible values they are there are. Now again, if we just take rand mod that, it'll give us something in the range 0 to whatever this value is, which isn't quite what we want. We want to now take that and shift it up to the range m to n, and that's where this adding m comes in. So for our random function in a range, where I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a random long out of the range m to n, I'm going to return the result of this computation, m plus and then rand mod 1 plus n minus m. So you can come up with a, a relatively simple function to give you a random number in a specific range. right? And again, this is the kind of thing where you write it once and whack it in your code. And you, from now on, I don't have to think about getting this formula right every time. I just call random. Say, give me a random number from 1 to 100. Give me a random number from 10 to 20. Give me a random number from 8 to 17. And it will go off and do it. So again, these are the ideas for playing with our, our random number generators. So maybe we'll just uh, do a quick play with, again, an example of that. And you can see that we just moved on from our arrays example in the last session. Um, let's see. So how about just to illustrate some of this a bit. Again, I'm going to use my C standard lib for the rand and s rand. I'm going to use my C time to get that time function so I can initialize my or seed my random number generator. I'm going to use my IO stream and the namespace for IO stream's sake. And for this one, let's start off. We'll just try, um, let's just generate five random numbers. Overall, and then we'll go through and generate five random numbers from zero to 10. And then we'll go through and generate five random numbers from, I don't know, 10 to 20. So just to illustrate some of these things and just to convince ourselves that this all actually works. So first off, we'll seed our random number generator. So this is where I use my srand, my time null. And then I'll just say for um, yeah, tell you what, we keep on declaring our index variables inside the for loops. Let's do it a little differently for, for this one time. So we'll declare r up there so we can use it in all three loops. And we'll say for r is 0, well, r is less than 5. And I should really be using constants here, r plus plus. And all I'm going to do this time is spit out the results of a rand, and we can see what it comes up with. So five random numbers. Yeah. And then we'll do five random numbers range 0 to 10. So same sort of thing for R is 
blah, zero, r is less than five, r plus plus. And I'm gonna get lazy in my typing here and just say, okay, the next random number is, and so this time we're gonna take rand oops, mod 11. All right, so we get a result from zero to 10. And we'll see how that goes. And for the last one, we'll go five random numbers in the range 10 to 20. And so once again, for r is zero, r is less than five, r plus plus. So for this one, I want, what do I want? So I'm gonna want something, there are 11 possible values, right? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 11 possible values. So it's gonna be one of these mod 11s to get it into the, the set of 11 possible values. And I want the smallest one to be 10. So I'm gonna take my 10 plus my rand mod 11. And so this is doing sort of manually what that rand mn function would have been doing for us. So let's give that a try and see what I've messed up in terms of syntax. And again, we'll use our wall and our wextra to turn on our different error checking options. Hey, all right, um, so let's try running this. Oops. Okay, so that first set of five random numbers where we just called rand and spewed out whatever it gave us, right? And again, you can see that it, we wind up with this range of fairly large val random values. And then we'll get five random numbers in the range zero to 10 where we're just taking it mod 11. Right? And again, we wind up with a bunch of different values in the range. Uh, five random numbers in the range 10 to 20. Again, we, we get this, uh, um, this random sequence where everything's in the right range. And you can't quite happily go through and, you know, maybe we try a couple of larger values so we see a little more of the behavior here. So we'll generate 10 of each of those this time. So yeah, we get 10 random values in the range zero, uh, zero to 10, and we didn't happen to get a 10 in there, 10 in the range, 10 to 20. Again, we start seeing the, the variation that's possible. And it looks kind of pseudo random from our perspective, right? It's tough to tell what's a statistical anomaly, but again, this is one basic way of going through and generating random sequences Right, generating random numbers so we can get some unpredictability in our code. All right, I will leave that there.